scan. So all scan that we did uh, in our previous session, they are using complete TCP, right? They are using complete three-way handshake and three-way handshake for connection, uh, uh, terminate the connection, okay? They are using complete TCP here there so it is somehow you know uh, it's a it's a good idea but uh, from the perspective of cyber security or for a, a target system if target system had used a firewall or ids then there might be a possibility that they can find you right uh, they can find the attacker so what i mean to say is if uh, this target system which is here that you are targeting this target system has a layer on it of a firewall there is a layer uh, one more uh, let me take here this is a target and there is a layer of firewall here then it is somehow uh, not reasonable to use you know the complete tcp so this complete tcp by means of complete tcp it is using you know all uh, connection establishment that is uh, connection establishment and uh, connection uh, termination right so you had seen connection establishment in the way of tcp scan uh, where we have send 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 ack and ack whereas in connection terminate uh, we had used a fin packet right so both this thing are going to be understand by this firewall and definitely this thing is going to be again blocked by uh, you know this uh, firewall so this is not going to be accept by your firewall again going to uh, uh, discard it this right because you are using the complete tcp here so it's not a good idea to do this Right. So instead of this, if I'm using the complete TCP and there is a rule for it, if there is a rule in the firewall that please, if you see any 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 complete TCP packet coming to my target, then please drop it. Right. If there is a rule written in firewall, then what I can do, I can use something like I can divide this, I can split this complete TCP into some fragment. So instead of using this thing, now I'm using something else. I can use I can use something called as fragment scan now okay it's a fragment scan and not a complete tcp scan so it is a fragment tcp scan so instead of a, a com sending a complete tcp header i'm sending the division now okay the idea is to split up the tcp header over several packets so it is going to be very complex for a target firewall to understand okay it is not going to be very simple so it is going to be make make it harder for packet filter or ids or any other annoyances to understand this scan right so just to make mo more complex we are doing the fragment scan so it is a very simple idea the, the idea is just to uh, send instead send instead of a complete tcp uh, you can send fragment tcp here fragment tcp you're sending a fragment tcp so in this fragment tcp what i'm gonna do is so a complete uh, so a complete i'm so sorry so a complete uh, 20 byte or a minimum length of tcp so minimum whatever the minimum length of tcp header is there is going to be split uh, in three packets okay here the fragment the fragment scan is going to split the complete tcp header into three fragments uh, the first uh, two uh, two packets are going to be with uh, eight bytes uh, and one packet is going to be uh, with four bytes right this is the idea of fragmentation so this is how the fragmentation is going to be happen fragmentation of tcp header right so it's a 20 byte header minimum length so we can uh, divide this thing two packets with 8 bit and one packet with uh, 4 bytes so it is 8 8 16 plus 4 20 so 20 byte header i'm splitting and then i'm this uh, then i'm you know this three packet is going to be reached to the firewall and firewall is having the rule for complete tcp but doesn't have a rule for fragment scan i can definitely scan the firewall is there any uh, port uh, 2021 20, open for me or not okay this is what i'm gonna do in this session so let's get back uh, to the kali machine and instead of xp machine i have now uh, ubuntu with me uh, another linux distro and uh, so instead of a 21 port number uh, i'm using a port 22 you see port 22 is specifically meant for ssh connection uh, what do you mean by ssh uh, well ssh is a secure shell a secure shell is meant for uh, a remote connection encrypted remote connection like if you are sitting here currently and uh, in some location and your uh, remote 
uh, server maybe at some uh, remote uh, location and if you want to connect to that server then you cannot uh, send the packets or the connection packet like in a plain text right you need some encrypted connection uh, or an encrypted packet to send it to the uh, remote server so to do that we have a ssh okay so the line the complete line between you and your remote server is going to be secure okay it is going to be secure shell so this is how a secure shell you know works so it is having a port 22 and i had opened that port here in this uh, ubuntu machine so let me scan it here the scan for fragment scan is nmap dash f and dash uh, so now it is not 21 it is 22 and the ip address is going to be changed now 168.117.128 all right so this is my fragment scan and when i hit enter you will see that the port is open for me 22 port number it's a tcp port it is open and the service is ssh okay so that's correct i mean it is open now uh, so this is how you know fragment scan gonna work now sir next question is how can i find this how a network administrator or a security person can find this fragment scan okay uh, well um, there are various ways to do it um, uh, to do this i need to have a wireshark again so let me call uh, wireshark so in this wireshark as i told you that three packets are going to be there uh, two with fragmented ip and one with uh, uh, you know tcp the four byte and two eight byte so let me see this so i am on eth0 so i'm gonna double click and one more time i'm gonna check this so here i uh, grab that uh, you know this fragment scan in the wireshark so you can see here that there is uh, something called as fragment ip can you see this fragment ip protocol fragment ip protocol and then there is a 22 cent now this is this is actually uh, you know something interesting uh, is going over here there is a sin sin ack and then reset packet this is a three way uh, handshake is going it is not completed but it is somehow you know something fishy here so I, if i double click here if i double click on this tcp you see when i go to this tcp protocol when i go to this it, it will tell me something what it will tell you see in options in tcp options uh, i'm so sorry not at, here in the flag these are flags there is a sin flag because uh, it is a sin let me see with uh, uh, internet protocol yeah here in the ip protocol you see here uh, let me just uh, make it lower here you see here in the in the ip protocol internet protocol version 4 you see there it is written 3 ipv4 fragment are you seeing this so here it is written frame 5 frame 6 and frame 7 here so frame 5 frame 6 and frame 7 this is important i mean see frame 5 is a fragmented ip all right so it is where is it it is from 130 to 128 which is my uh, ubuntu machine so it's of 8 byte it's of 8 byte and it is going to be for 4 byte so let's see fragmented ip if i open the i have a frame of 42 bytes if i minus 42 minus 14 if i do then uh, the 14 is for this ethernet frame then you will get 28 length you see so every time you do the fragmented fragment scan the total length of a data is going to be 28 every time you will get a 28 length so if i further move on 28 and then if i do like 28 minus 24 uh, sorry i think it's 20 i guess 28 minus uh, if i do 20 for this tcp uh, for the tcp header if i minus it then you will get 8 bytes so as i told you that it is going to be you know the first two packet are going going to be of 8 bytes so this is one 8 byte let me go for uh, frame 6 this is also fragmented ip same 42 minus 14 it's 28 so you'll get 28 here and then you will go for tcp it's going to be minus 20 and then you will get again 8 byte here so this is uh, like 8 by 8 by 16 byte you will get now if you go for this sin packet here which is a tcp so 42 minus 14 it's a 28 so you got 28 so it's it's again a it's again a fragmented ip so you are getting here uh, 28 minus if you do like uh, i guess 24 if you do uh, then you will get a 4 byte here so there is a length of 4 byte you can see there is a 4 byte in options so uh, the last packet is of 4 bytes so it's 8 plus 8 16 plus 4 20 bytes so it's a complete tcp header here can you see this 
So this is how you can uh, find that someone is doing fragmented scan on my computer. So it's a defensive mechanism that you can do, all right? Apart from that, uh, uh, what you can do is you can also look after this TCP. You are having SINs and ACK and reset packet. Okay, so you, is, is the uh, the uh, Kali machine is saying I'm, I want to terminate the connection now. It is not acknowledging this SIN ACK. It is just directly terminating the connection okay so this is the you know this is the thing that you need to look after uh, when someone is uh, doing the fragmented scan i hope uh, you understand this so if you understand it then uh, please uh, uh, you know so it is uh, it is also written here somewhere reassembled ipv4 in frame 7 so can you see it is reassembling at this tcp okay at this tcp it is reassembling so this is fragmented this is fragmented but it is reassembled here on the seventh packet so seventh packet is of tcp which is sending the sin it is a connection establishment packet it is saying okay so this is also an important observation you can look after all right so this is all about the uh, fragment scan and uh, uh, oh yeah one more thing i can i can tell you um, so let's say uh, let's say if i want to you know uh, if i want to close this if i want to uh, if this ubuntu uh, wants to make some firewall and uh, wants to close this uh, uh, I mean, want to drop this uh, this nmap scan which I had performed here dash fragment scan. If we, if you want to reject this, if you want to drop this this connection, this nmap port scan, then he can use something called as firewall. Um, for Ubuntu, I have an IP table. So here, uh, you know, the problem is for the length. So based on the length, you know, based on the length, based on the length this fragment is entering into the target system this is the important observation you are seeing because of the length it is it is entering into this tcp uh, sorry in the target system so length is the factor here what if i create a rule based on this length okay and when i create a create a rule based on length then i can you know somehow drop this packet also right so let me create a rule for uh, you know this uh, uh, this this fragment scan so i can use something called as ip table here so the syntax uh, for uh, ubuntu uh, for ip tables it's it's sudo um, ip tables uh, dash uh, i i'm sorry dash i for in um, dash i for input uh, dash p for protocol uh, it's a tcp protocol then m for dash m for length and then dash dash what length uh, you know uh, you want to provide so i can say that length should be a uh, 60 if you find any 60 byte uh, you know a frame then you just have to drop it so i can say dash j to have a result on it so reje result is a reject uh, reject that packet with uh, the options reject dash with a tcp reset so this is the thing and i hit enter uh, one two three and uh, I put no change target match by the name. Uh, I think uh, there is some mistake I had provided. Oh yeah, input is the wrong keyword here. So let me just change the keyword in its input, right? So when I hit enter, you see my rule is being accepted by the IP tables. So whenever a firewall look after this length 60 byte uh, of a frame, then it is going to be rejected. I can also, uh, I can do the variations here. So let me see 60 byte is enough for this uh, scan or not. So instead of open, now I want a closed connection for SSH. Let me do this. So again do, and you will see it is open yet. So this uh, dash F is not going on 60 byte. It is maybe going on because it is going on 42 and 44. So maybe if I do like uh, 60 instead of 60, if I do like 44, uh, let me do for, for 40 also. Uh, maybe I can do for um, 42 as well. If I do that, and now if I use the same nmap scan, let me just clear the screen so that you can uh, visualize it. Uh, this is the scan. Now you see the TCP of the port 22, it means the SSH service, it is closed by the firewall. So in this way, you can, you know, you can create a firewall so that you can block such fragment or some advanced port scanning. Okay, you can block in, in this manner. So this is one rule. Uh, this is for a reject option. If you want to enable this, right? If you, you do not want to do this, like for uh, every uh, you know connection, you have to <laughs> enable it. So if there is a reject, you can do something like accept to make it uh, you know open 
uh, once again so you can undo this uh, by typing the same thing uh, let me have uh, instead of uh, j uh, reject i just i'm just gonna do that except uh, for uh, 42 um, i'm just repeat it for 44 uh, except and then i'm gonna do for the same thing for 40 i'm gonna do the same thing for uh, 60 and it is accepted okay so let me uh, one more time scan it to make it open you see it is open now the question is if this length 60 length 44 and 40 is completely blocked by the firewall of the target then how to scan well one option in nmap is is there you can these are fixed length by the way is blocked by the firewall you what you can do you can create a frame which is dynamic in nature it create a frame of 61 byte then somehow it is not possible to block by the firewall because there is no rule for it right maybe 43 and by right you can do that so uh, one option in the nmap is there which is dash dash data dash length uh, and then the size of the data you can provide then nmap is not gonna uh, sorry the firewall is not gonna block you it is somehow tell you to enter into the target system this is what we can do so here uh, one more time if i uh, go ahead and uh, you know um, uh, if i type a rule like this this is for 60 byte and uh, this is for 44 byte and this is of uh, 40 byte so and when i do this in map dash f dash p22 192.168.117.128 then the then the ssh connection that is port 22 is closed for me why because i have a rule for it right but now if i want to you know exactly because 60 44 and 40 is in block uh, i can do something like you know data length i can change that so the syntax is nmap dash dash data dash length and provide the length here so it's a 12 byte now you see it's a 12 byte and dash p22 give the ip address of target machine and 128 if you do that you see it is going to give me the exact state of that service so it is open and it is open actually and there is no rule written for this dash dash uh, dash length 12 right so it is not blocked even if you block it somehow you see it is this rule is not going to work there uh, if i do the same scan it is going to give me the open connection even if you block this with this kind of rule uh, definitely there is a there is an option to block this i mean this request dash dash uh, dash length 12 if you know please comment in the comment section how to block this uh, would be a reasonable thing for you know uh, create a new video on it right so if this is a length 12 uh, then uh, it is not going to be blocked by the firewall and it will tell me the exact state of the ssh now the question is how how do we you know understand that uh, the uh, some attacker is attacking my machine with a port scan uh, with this kind of option how can i how can i know this well to know this you just have to look after in the wireshark one more time and you can easily find the actual tcp connection so i will be on the eth 0 interface and uh, one more time i'm going to clear this first of all and let me run the scan again so this is land 12 so i opened it uh, sorry i do that and i close this now how to check this how basically i can do this well you see you need to check out for uh, i mean you will not get uh, initially the thing but uh, you need to go for like this this is a rst connection this is a sin ack there is no you know first uh, there is a ssh here so it's a length 12 so it directly tells you that is a length 12 can you see so you had sent a packet which is of length 12 how you get this length 12 it's a simple thing see uh, you can create it actually uh, let me see the tssh okay so this is the connection is completely encrypted now you see this is 70 byte right so 70 minus 14 is going to be again um, if you look after 17 minus 14 is 56 so let me go for internet so there is there you go you have a length of 56 now uh, if you see the tcp header here it's a tcp header here uh, where is it um, I think uh, it's 12, I guess. So if you minus this 56 minus, yeah, it's a 12, right? So 56 minus 12, if you do that, then you will get the exact 44, right? It is actually it is 44, 
uh, see the total length right so the total length is 44 but it is hiding behind that 12 right so if you calculate it is 44 eventually but it is uh, it is 12 that i'm sending so it's a 70 minus 14 of ethernet frame you will get 56 right so 56 is here in the internet protocol here so 56 minus 12 minus 12 for tcp header so that you had sent the header if you if you minus it if you minus it you will get a, a 44 um, uh, in the in the thing okay let me observe the other things this is the first time actually i'm looking this it's, it's hang now okay so it's a 50 uh, sorry it's a 56 now in the ip and then minus 12 is going to be 44 and let me see what other things are there options is having four points all right so 12 bytes is for payload right so 12 is the data length so i'm sending with the data uh, length it's not the total length right so 44 you will uh, get eventually and the in the last time so this way you can find uh, the the uh, you know uh, what do you call this this scan so all these are uh, rst packets it's a uh, to reset the connection it is saying it's good and again we have a retransmission reset it and then retransmission so something like that so i hope uh, you understand this scan